Salt Lake City International Airport, the local time is 10.58 p.m. Hi, I'm Jana. I'm here in Provo, Utah to see firsthand just how Wilson loudspeakers are made in America. Hi, I'm Corbin, and I'm here to tell you about how a tune tot is manufactured and the steps involved. So the material arrives at Wilson Audio, and they're in sheets, four, four feet by six feet, but some are blocks. We're using these three exotic materials, V, X, and S materials. In comparison, uh, some of the other loudspeaker manufacturers are using a typical grade MDF. The raw materials that we use range from five times to 22 times in cost. And this machine is doing, you know, basic shapes of the speaker. Even though there are a lot of hand steps later, they're doing the basic shapes that maintain the tolerance for us, which we'll build upon. Here's a, an example of, you know, some of the, the, the machining that's done on one side of an enclosure. And so it's not something that you always see from the outside of a product, um, but the machine allows us to do steps like this that um, are important to the form and the function of the Tune Tot and each of our products. So after the milling process has occurred, the craftspeople prep parts, they take the necessary adhesive, they're lining up the parts, putting the adhesive on the parts, and using clamps and jigs to assemble the speaker. And now it's taking shape. It's moving from a two-dimensional, two-dimensional pieces to a 3D shape. You'll see there's some glue squish, and that's intentional. That's to ensure that it's airtight and any shrink back that may occur. After the cure time of the tune tot, the clamps are removed. It takes five days for that to occur, and Trevin grabs the tune tot and starts working his magic on the enclosure. Trevin has a standard there where he's, he's replicating what is on the standard with this speaker at this point. And he's using a variety of tools, but this material is difficult to work with. So he's using a variety of tools and sandpaper, 40 grit, 80 grit, up to 180 grit. And he's working to ensure that there are flatness in the right areas where it needs to be flat. And then also that the transition points mate from a, the front of the enclosure to the side of the enclosure. And roundovers are consistent and smooth so that when the top coat goes on, that it's a smooth surface. It takes about two hours to prepare one single tune tot for the next stage.
So once Trevins completed the fabrication process in the fab shop, it's then moved to another QC station, which is, you know, throughout the manufacturing process, a run number is assigned, and Joe is doing some basic sanding to ensure that roundovers and all of the inspection points have been covered and there's consistency from one craftsperson to another. After it's gone through this QC inspection, it's now ready to be gel coated. Gel coat is a marine grade product that is impervious to water and we use it as a prime coat. So it's in preparation of the speakers getting the top coats. We have one gel coat booth, which we put a variety of speakers in. We take out pedestals and add in other pedestals, depending on what we're gel coating. But we're doing two loads a day, so it's about four hours per load. And sometimes we're running shifts that go longer than that. The tune tot then goes in and all of our speakers go in to be prepped for paint. There's a texture to the gel coat, and that needs to be smoothed out and refined so that it's, it's a smooth glass finish once the top coats go on the speaker. So they're using the same tools in this shop as they do in the fabrication shop. They're just using different grit sandpaper. They're sanding up to a 600 grit finish and they're using a black guide coat that aids them into finding pinholes and random sand scratches before it gets painted. So after the speaker's prepped for paint, it goes through another QC point by the employee that prepped the speaker. At this point, they're turning on bright lights that replicate the light of the paint booth. They're spinning the enclosure around and they're wiping it uh, to remove contaminants and do any basic sanding that needs to be done. Brian, our master painter, prepares the booth for painted speakers. He maximizes the loads. He can paint multiple colors at the same time, and he can paint a variety of colors. So we have solid colors, we have metallic colors, we have candy colors, we have pearls, satin finish, gloss finishes, and he can do any of those. The time that it takes to do that could range from a couple of hours up to eight hours, depending on, on the complexity of the colors or the finish. The Tune Tot we offer in three standard colors and three upgraded colors. So Brian is utilizing three different paint booths in this paint process. They're insulated paint booths that we're able to bake at temperatures to help the curing process. But at this point, there's multiple layers. You have the gel coat layer, you have a ceiling layer, you have multiple base coat layers. Depending on the finish, again, you could have candy and pearl and so forth. And then you're gonna have clear coat layers. It takes a long time to do that process, but it also takes a long time to cure. It could take one week to cure up to multiple weeks and even months, depending on, on the finish. So the speakers move to a staging area while they're going through the curing process. That could be a week up to a few months. And as that time approaches, they will grab a speaker and start the polishing process. Now, this sometimes is a surprise to people that we're actually sanding a painted finish. It's not something that you typically think of, at least I, I didn't until I worked at Wilson Audio. But to get the level of finish that we're after, it is. So you're taking sandpaper, starting with 800 grit sandpaper up to 1500 grit, and you're changing the surface, the way that that looks and then you're using two different polishes to polish that back to a nice high sheen. So you get the gloss back, but this time what's being revealed is there's no longer the orange peel that was there that was introduced from the process of being painted. Joe receives the enclosure after the polishing has occurred on the speaker. He's looking for any imperfections in it. He's documenting it, whether it needs to go back and be reworked or uh, small imperfections need to be taken care of or big, big ones at this point. And he's putting a build tag on it when production's able to build it based on the cure time. Hello, my name is Daryl Wilson. I'm CEO of Wilson Audio Specialties and uh, we find ourselves here in the gallery of our 46,000 square foot building. This is where all Wilson Audio products and Wilson Audio special application engineering products are handmade. We've had companies approach us and uh, want to help us 
with offshoring and producing cabinets in other places, exotic places, even. Um, and um, there's, there's a myriad of problems in that that we won't get into. It would be easy to look at Toon Tot and say, well, it's small. It wasn't an exercise in making something small and cheaper. Toon Tot is a distillation of all of our innovations, all of our materials research, our driver research, how we make crossovers, everything that we've learned down to the screws and we use in our larger products distilled down into just a smaller package. Just because it's small doesn't mean that we're losing content. Uh, that was a challenge in developing the product because all those parts and all those pieces, um, they are expensive. But getting down to um, how to create a compact package that performs the way one would expect from um, not just a smaller size product, but from a Wilson Audio product, um, that was very satisfying to see that come to fruition and, and to see it uh, develop into what it is now. Now the, the paint process has been completed, but simultaneously, before the product is being built in the final assembly area, the crossover network needs to be built, the grills need to be built, um, and so that process entails a lot as well that may be overlooked at times. As of a few years ago, we acquired a capacitor company and we now make our own capacitors to the specifications for each speaker. And then the crossover network is built internally as well. And we're doing that point-to-point -point soldering, not on, on the circuit boards, it gives us some flexibility with that, uh, the values of the crossover and to get them as tight as, as we need them to be. Crossover network is soldered together and then it is encapsulated in a resin that keeps it from vibrating when the speaker is being played. It also maintains the value that was spec'd in the design process. So it's measured, it's replicated, and the design stays the same. You get vibrations in shipping that we don't have to worry about because of the resin. It also helps to keep that network proprietary to Wilson Audio. Wilson Audio handcrafts our own cables as well, specific to the crossover of the Tune Tot. And those have different twist ratios and are twisted and soldered onto the crossover network as well. We make the grills in-house by hand using our proprietary material. So we're taking all of these sub-assemblies that have taken a, a fair amount of time to build. Um, and we've, so we've got the crossovers, the cabling, the, the metal, and the match driver sets that all are going to be incorporated in with the dampening material uh, in the enclosure, getting it ready for the final testing stage.
When I say Wilson Audio is a family-owned business, it's not just the Wilson part of Wilson Audio. Walking through the, the facility here, uh, each department, um, there are fathers and sons, um, there are spouses, there are relatives in some way. Uh, I'd say a large uh, percentage of our uh, workforce here, our craftspeople, are related in some way. Uh, I think when you have a group of people like that, they care about each other. They care about each other's success. They care about each other becoming the best version of themselves. Um, and by having an environment like that, and as my, uh, as my dad said, that uh, we want to foster a culture of divine kinship, which means lifting each other up. We are more than what we are outside of the building, inside of the building, that's so much greater than that. And so uh, we don't just look at, at uh, people inside this building, the craftspeople inside this building, and they are what they produce that day. They're far beyond that. And I think when you approach um, uh, business and personal relationships in, in that sense, with, with a genuine uh, desire to foster divine kinship, it's amazing what people can do and the level of comfort that you can feel in an environment that is associated with um, um, discomfort, you know, the word work. Um, we're creating together, we're building together, we're growing together, we're evolving as people together. After the speaker is assembled with all of these sub-assemblies, it goes into the QC lab for the final test. At that point, they're torquing the drivers to make sure that the drivers are torqued to the right specification and that it's uniform in its tightness. They're also looking at all of the paperwork, making sure that they have the correct drivers. There's a lot that goes on in the lab. So the drivers that are matched for the tune tot and every speaker go through a break-in period. They go through a burn-in process where it allows us to run a signal through those drivers and then we match them after it goes through that process. Also, the, the tweeter has a modification on the back of the tweeter that we make that is unique for the tune tot, and that's performed in the lab. So the drivers are matched in the testing lab. The crossovers are tested before they go through the encapsulation we call potting process. And so they're ensuring that all of the cabling is, uh, all of the solder joints are correct, all of the cabling is accurate, that the polarity is correct. With regards to drivers, they're made to our specifications, made for Wilson Audio, proprietary to Wilson Audio, and we make some other modifications to the tweeter in-house, and we're matching drivers within a half dB tolerance in the tune top. So in the testing lab, this is also the culmination of all of the paperwork that has been generated throughout the manufacturing process, and all the serial numbers, enclosure numbers of drivers, crossovers, and inspection points. This is paperwork that it gets, gets filed and is associated with that speaker, with that serial number. And we have the paperwork from the first speaker that was ever made from Wilson Audio. So we're able to match drivers if something happens or as something happens to those drivers. Uh, one gets damaged by, for some reason, we're able to pull an exact match that would be specific to that that set of speakers. And that's how we build a tune tot. It goes to shipping and it's off for a new adventure. That's all from us here in Provo, Utah. We hope this video gives you some insight into how loudspeakers are made right here in the USA. Um, so in my main listening room, I have uh, a special one-of-one one, uh, Chronosonic XVX uh, that's painted uh, in sparkling white uh, pearl, and it has some special inlays. 
and the uh, hardware color is a bronzed hardware with the uh, red carbon fiber back. In my bedroom, I have a quartz pair of Alitas that are mounted to the wall. Um, they're flanking the flat screen TV, and we love uh, listening to that every day, me and my wife. And then downstairs in our theater, we have uh, two Lokis, which is substantial base, and they continue to impress me. Uh, in sparkling white, um, I have a uh, Watch Center Series 3 in Galaxy Gray because it uh, blends well when the lights turn off. And I wanted the color to pop on my Alexia Vs, and so we have a ruby red uh, pearl on those uh, with the Blanco, the white grills, and it uh, blends beautifully with the environment. My wife really likes that too.